I'm beginning to wonder at this point with episode seven of a Kabi's Sailor uniform that there's kind of a breadcrumbing happening with with Erika. I really it's like it's hinting at something being wrong with Erika. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> this show has always been just very wholesome and very cute slice of life. And I just feel like something is brewing. Um, just had a, an element of Erika being sort of distant and even Akebi really acknowledging that there's something that, that obviously there's something different. She notes that Erika, she's never seen that side of Erika, the side that's, you know, off-putting and standoffish and just unable to be approached and obviously giving off a sense of leave me alone kind of attitude. And it's something that Akebi's never seen. They've always been really friendly with each other. And very close. So there's two different scenes with Akebi and Erika specifically. The first scene where she comes in and they both greet each other with first names and they're all, you know, happy about it. And Akebi tells Erika that she sent all these pictures to her father and her father was like really happy. And he's, you know, like, I want to go out fishing with you guys. But note specifically that <laughs> her father said that her hands were very beautiful. And this gets in this whole discussion about her playing the violin and everything like that. And it, and it seemed like Erica kept looking at her hands. And I was kind of wondering, okay, maybe it's one of those things like, oh, wow, he actually noticed that. That's interesting. She puts a lot of care into her nails and everything like that. But then it kind of jumped. The next scene that we've seen of Erica in this episode is her walking into this dark storage room or whatever, or this unused room, and she wipes the dust off of this piano. And I'm, I, again, I was kind of wondering if what they're trying to hint at here is that, again, I could be talking about her father, noting their hands, immediately the piano, and then her playing the piano, which she's always played the violin before this. She'd never played the piano. And she obviously seemed like she was a little off put by Toko arriving and her playing the piano and seeing her. So I'm thinking it's like this secret thing that she likes that is a personal connection for her. And again, just based on the fact that it transitioned to this from, I could be talking about her father. I'm wondering if it's going to be an aspect of Erica not having a father or losing her father. Because there's obviously some sort of interesting connection with Erica and pianos. So again, to speculation at this point, but it seemed like it was putting a lot of emphasis on her kind of doing her own thing this episode while everything was happening with Akabi and Hebi Mori specifically. So I'll be interested to see what that goes with, with that. But <laughs> again, it's a little bit... I'm like, oh, I don't want anything bad to happen. I'm, this, this show has been so wholesome this whole time, and now it just seems like they're hinting at something that's going to probably break my heart, which I think is to the credit of the writer. To have all these wholesome moments, to have this really solid, grounded slice of life that's playing out that you're really getting attached to all these characters, and you don't really want anything bad to happen to them. It's a sign of a great slice of life, something that doesn't rely on heavy melodrama. It's something that has this subtle storytelling that might jump up eventually and bite us in the butt. Be a majority of this episode, so technically is actually focused on Hebi Mori and yes, a little sprinkle of Togano. And Hebi Mori is this girl that, you know, it seems like she has interest in electric guitar and rock and everything like that. She even has a little magazine that Ekabi catches her reading. Uh, <laughs> I did like the jab that was in this introduction because I really thought it was going to be a focal point of the story, but literally Heavy Mori's looking at this magazine and she's noting the fact that this one person that she enjoys is 10th place and she's a little upset about that. But then there's an, a note that says that the next article will have an interview with Mickey and she, in her own mind, says, ah, oh, enough with this girl already. And then right then you're seeing Akebi walk up and I'm like, oh, no, this is going to be one of those things where Akebi comes up and goes, oh, what are you reading? I love Mickey. Don't you love Mickey? And she's like, no, I hate her. No, it didn't do that. It was literally just kind of in her head the focus just quickly jumped right into Akebi noting that she likes music, that she reads these things as well, but there's specifically a magazine about learning music, not so much about the musicians themselves, even though it's a part of it. And they have these musical notes in the back. And Akebi quickly jumps into saying, I want to listen to you play your guitar. And then this turns into Heavy Mori having to learn how to guitar. I really thought that was cute because it's one of those things where I guess somebody gets a bump. You, you have this kind of set thing that you do. You have this interest in this one thing, but you don't really necessarily have that determination or that reason or that goal to really go after it. Yeah, I like violin. I would like to learn violin, but you never really do. And this is a cute little way of doing that because she kind of stumbled into the conversation with a Kebby and being how absolutely pure and with pure honesty that Akebi has, she's able to pull people out of things. So immediately Akebi snags onto this little hook and says, I want that, and she couldn't tell Akebi no. So she's like, okay, cool, great. I want to listen to you play it. 
see you later, and then runs off. And this turns into this whole thing where <laughs> Heavy Mori just, just kind of gets pulled into it. Like, okay, well, I guess I'll try this acoustic guitar that my fa- I got from my father. And she starts strumming at it, realizes she can't do it, and she just gives up. And then her roommate, uh, Togano, comes in after talking to Ekebi and says, Ekebi said that you wanted to play this thing, so are you going to do it? She's like, ah, it's too difficult for me. And she's like, you should probably tell her. I mean, Ekebi's really kind of looking forward to this. And that just, again, just pushes her into just, doing it just pushing it now granted it, it's part akebi but the other part is obviously tagano and that tagano is this girl that's her roommate that has been pushing herself to learn basketball she was never good at it and she just kept pushing herself and pushing herself and that in culmination with akebi ends up being that driving force to push her forward as she i thought this was probably one of my favorite scenes in the show overall and I think it's kind of accented by some really fantastic music that's kind of perfectly aligned with the scene but she's walking into this area and then she notes like I think it was um, I she's out there running on track she learned she joined the track team even though she obviously seems like she's not very athletic she's pushing herself she sees Akebi and she's pushing herself to sing and then she goes to the gym and she or gymnasium and she sees Togano and she's pushing herself to get that basket it was a really cool scene and again what Togano specifically said was nobody's good at things immediately. It's just you kind of have to keep working at it. And then right there with that, you have this conversation with Ekebi that pushed her to say that, which is this idea of isn't it exciting to try new things and to push yourself? And it was like this culmination of everything just kind of (laughs) zeroing in right on her to push herself. And I thought it was fantastic. It was very well kind of structured to tell three stories, but ultimately come down to one character. Yeah, I like the whole fact that she's like, well, yeah, I was I was going to do it, but then I gave up. I I was messing with the tension thing at the top, and it broke the string, so obviously there's a reason why I should not do it, because obviously I'm terrible at it. It was it was a quick give up, and then, again, that push to really keep going, which I thought was really fantastic. But yeah, this leads to the final scene where she finally arrives at school with her guitar on her back, and she's super embarrassed and goes to Kevin and says, I'm ready kind of thing. <laughs> And this leads them to the music room where they were going to sneak a, a little play session there. And yes, that's when Erika comes in and she they hide underneath the piano and then Erika starts playing the piano. Which again, really very interesting art style choice, by the way, f- f- to start things off. They had kind of a, it, it kind of shifted to a very more sketchy and loose animation. And, it, and it's not as if it did anything crazy. Like, um, specifically, Mob Psycho 100 does this a lot, and a, a few other, I think mostly their their studio, where it, it almost shifts from where everything's very structured, and everything looks very kind of polished, to something that's more of a sketch, just so they can move a lot smoother and quicker in the animation process. And it seemed like it was doing that, but it never really got, it wasn't a long song. So it, it seemed kind of weird, and I don't know if I liked this placement. I don't. The only thing I can think of is they were specifically trying to push this idea that the f- they were they felt something different in that room. The moment she started playing, they felt something, and I so I kind of feel like I got something out of that shift in art style and that shift of animation, but at the same time, it also felt a little out of place and it was very short. But I guess technically, Erica got interrupted but yeah that's when we have that whole interaction between Toko and Erika and Erika being kind of very uh again standoffish and how uh Akebi's specifically noting the idea again that she's never seen her like that she's never seen that but she still is like but I still love that music so again I, I'm hoping they'll get into that decently quick and it's not as bad as I think it is but it just really had a feeling of I could be seeing a different side of Erica that she'd never seen before. And unlike most times where it's a story beat that's interesting, I mean, especially when it came to Okuma, her whole that whole thing was seeing people from different perspective. Even when it came to Toko and Usagi uh, Usagi Hara, when they went to her place, it was seeing a different side of people. And this is the one rare case where when Akebi seen this different side of Erica, she looked down and she didn't look happy. And so it was a very different. Uh, reaction to that so again it it has me worried but we'll see but yes and heavy's like no nah, i'm done i can't follow up that beautiful erika <laughs> kozaki uh, kizaki performance so i'm not gonna do it and that's that could be pushes her to do it and this is a great a, another really fantastic scene because i felt like the way they portrayed this scene it wasn't perfect and that was the whole point like her playing that she did very good for that. Sh- it, it didn't really indicate how long she was really practicing, but you can assume 
maybe a good week or so that she was practicing really hard on this. I mean, bandages all of the fingers because obviously that damages your fingers. <laughs> but like I said, it, it did it. The scene did so well in the idea that they they whoever when however they recorded this, you could hear the imperfections. She was obviously straining her voice in certain points. Um, the notes weren't perfect, but it played it out so well because you you kind of felt the dedication that she put into just doing this. Yes partly for Akebi's sake because she was Akebi was looking forward to it but also because this was something that she wanted to learn which I thought was fantastic so I guess the scene kind of portrayed that effort and I felt so good for her to be able to pull that off and yeah Akebi clapping her hands to it she did a fantastic job so she found her new passion and that that's definitely cute I forgot to mention earlier but yes we did get our embarrassing moment of the episode and heavy Mori got it <laughs> It's like, it's like every episode, it's like, who's the cast in this episode? Who's the focus? Okay, who's going to have the embarrassing moment? Yeah, she did. She's rocking out there, and then suddenly <laughs> uh, Togano pops in there and and and, and finds her uh, just rocking out. So, yeah, cute episode overall. Really did love it. I, I just, I think it was such a great culmination of all these different kind of stories to kind of push one center narrative, which was, you know, to push yourself and to try new things, and that excitement around that. That, again, Akebi kind of just infects people with. <laughs> they can't really get away. Oh, yeah. The other great part. That <laughs> I laughed so hard at Akebi doing that impression of her club president. I, I really am looking forward to the moment that we finally get her. Like, the, the the club president really looks unique. That Obviously, her her character design is very unique. She has very... I think she's only the only one that has, like, a very bright... Uh, unnatural color hair. I mean, you can say probably she's a redhead, but I think it's pink or something like that. But she's very unique looking and her eyes are very unique, which several other ones have unique eyes. But yeah, just having a Kevy just, yeah, we're, we're practicing outside because uh, the president says something like, we need to do this. And it's like, oh my gosh, that was so perfect. It was great. But yeah, another fantastic episode. I love this series to death. Looking forward to more, even though, like I said, right now I am, I'm pushing my brain into a possible arc of Erika having some sort of something going on with her that I'm not looking forward to it being too heavy. Hopefully it's not too heavy. This series hasn't been too heavy. It's always been wholesome, but we'll see. But that's my thoughts on episode seven of our Kepi's Sailor Uniform. I hope you guys enjoyed this impression. If you did, leave a like down below, comment, let me know what's the, end of the episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. Support us on Patreon or through our tips link in the description below. Definitely appreciate everybody that does, and y'all take care.